question was asked earlier about the, and look at this in a different way, the question was asked earlier about the, the judiciary and the, the legitimacy of it. And I think uh, the media is something that has brought into question the legitimacy of most of our institutions. Um, and when we have the social mobility debate, it's very good at saying legal profession really bad, medical profession really bad. But what you might not know is that when Alan Melbourne produced his last report, there was a chapter in there on the media. And the reason you don't know that is because no one reported it. <laughs> they reported on law, they reported on medicine. Now this is an area where you've got a huge problem of um, unpaid internships, of po it's, it's actually remarkably similar in some ways. Everybody has to do their undergraduate degree, then go and do a postgraduate qualification, which is very expensive, then work unpaid for six months, 12 months, only then to find that a lot of the jobs are taken by, by people who know people anyway. And if you look at the profile of journalists, so, you know, of the three, last three years, 82% um, of journalists did some form of unpaid work, sorry, work experience or internship, and 92% of those were unpaid. Um, about 67% of journalists come from professional families, which are only about 19% of the country. So I can't tell you how to get lawyers a better uh, publicity any more than I can politicians or any other group, but what I would say is that we need to put up a mirror and look at some of the things uh, that go on in the media as well. The other thing which is that even where people are aware of the difference between legal aid and commercial work is that they're not aware of the difference between the, the sort of salaries that you can command. And so they make an assumption because you're a lawyer, depend, no matter what kind of law you do, that you earn lots of money. And if we're able to increase obviously the knowledge that people have about what we do, the kind of work we earn from the salaries that we have, there's likely to, less likely to be this perception that when we're campaigning and we are trying to get a message out there that these, you know, that cuts and uh, any changes that the government are trying to make are destructive and not in the public interest, there'd be far more support. I, I tear my hair out with this one because I know the, the Bar Council has been pumping out stories endlessly of what your typical uh, young barrister is earning, which is not a lot at all, and the media rarely pick it up, occasionally do, but as soon as the fat cat story is out there, you know, everyone's at it. Um, it's the nature of journalism. It makes me a more interesting read, I suspect. You think? You know, think if it, if it were your son or daughter who'd been arrested and was being held without access to a lawyer for four days um, because their address was in somebody else's address book. Would you want them to have a lawyer then or not? You know, we need to get back to the point where we're adding value to individuals and doing things smarter, doing more for less. Um, looking for new opportunities. And it doesn't need a sort of, um, you know, a commission of inquiry. What it needs is people to say, ooh, I think I'll do it that way. And doing it that way and succeeding and then everyone else not being able to see them for dust as they, as they change. We are a very, very um, innovative profession um, across the legal profession. Very, very innovative. Um, things are very, very different now to the way they were 35 years ago when I started, and that, I mean, some of it, that's government and ABS and so on, but mainly it's people having a good idea and following it um, and getting a, a competitive advantage. And, and that's, you know, that's what lawyers do. We're problem solvers, and that's one of the problems we've got to solve. Okay, I'm going to take one for